pulse is 50 foot high through the fumes and right, welcome back unusual week ahead this week it's time to attack the paintwork now i've got to flat it down with an 800 grit get it ready for the artwork and the clear coat to go over the top if i do bust through any of it i've then got to spot repair that wait for that to dry flat that down so there's a little bit to do today this will be up for wednesday it's monday at time of recording this now the strict instructions of the artist al Mackie, has said to me he needs it to be completely rested with nothing done to it for five days so that's why i'm doing this today Monday, he is coming on Saturday. Now the normal sequence of events would be that on Thursday or Friday, I would film the video for the weekend, but we have nothing on the paintwork to film until he arrives on Saturday. So there wouldn't be the paint video for Saturday because that's when we're actually filming it. It's gonna be a long day in the garage here as well. And probably enough footage will be filmed on that day, maybe about 12 hours, I imagine, because it's gonna be a long day to get it all done in one go then we'll have to make that broken down into maybe two videos. So I think next week, Wednesday and Saturday, will probably be the paintwork finish, something to look forward to. But for now, in between, in place of what we can't do on Saturday, we're gonna do something with the Triumph. It's been a long, long time since we did anything on Penny Pitstop's Triumph, and it pen. Two right. Two right, so we're gonna do something like that. I've found some really cool accessories I wanna get fitted, so that's gonna look quite cool. And at the same time, we're gonna make that into a mini Q&A. We've got some burning questions to answer, questions that keep coming up, Questions have been posed by the patrons and so on, so we're gonna answer those at the same time. So Saturday's video that you will see this coming weekend will be a mini Q&A and some work on the Triumph, which is pretty cool. And then after that, next week, we'll actually you will actually start to see the results of this. But for today, it's just a rub down. So this is too much waffle. So let's get on with it. Ready, Ben? Let's go. Let's go. Right, there we are. Okay, now this one's got a little bit of a reaction on it. Um, it was always there, I knew this was gonna be the one to watch out for. So I've had to take, in order to get down through the ripples, little fish eyes and whatnot that all developed here, I've had to go down to get to whatever it was that caused it. A lot of people have done this in the past, but they can't stop it, it keeps fish eyeing every single time. And from what I understand, from listening to professionals, they said the reason is that people will rub out the paint goes over the top of the imperfection. That then causes a fish eye, which is like little dimples all over it. That's what that had. And then when you rub it down, you take the dimples out, spray back over it, but you haven't taken out the cause, whatever it was that caused the fish eyes, which is obviously a little bit of wax or grease trapped or something, or it's not keyed up enough, and that causes it to ripple up and go horrible. So till you get down through that, then deal with that with some wax and grease remover, then start again, you're never gonna get rid of it. So all I've got to do with this one, sadly it seems, I've got to repaint this one. But I've gone over it, everything else is fine, there's no other problems. Keep the rest of it up as much as I need to, just for a quick lick over of the black again. So I'm gonna do this next, and then this will get time to dry. So by the time I've rubbed the rest down, this one will be all right. I can rub it down as well. reaction that time very happy with that but will it dry in time don't know might have to do it tomorrow but one or the other that's better that's exactly how it should be the first time now. there we go always invert the can and blow the paint out of the tube otherwise it blocks it up you know that okay time for the second one now there's no imperfections on this in the sense that i've got to block anything out so this is literally just flatten down literally 800 paper water and take all the shine or all the surface off so that it's completely ready and keyed up for paint. Wish me luck, don't go through it.
Right. Now time for the tank. Wish me luck. Right, okay, before I go any further, I just want to mention these things, scuff pads, okay? Now, obviously I said at the beginning that Mackie needs five days with this between rubbing it down and painting it. And the reason for that, partly, is because when you scuff it up and you rip the surface off, you open up the pores of the paint surface, and because you're using water to wash off the dust, effectively that goes into the surface of the paint and it takes that long. He wants it that long, and I totally understand that. For it to dry right out completely before he paints it. You don't want to trap water underneath the paint, that would just trash it. So there is another option. If you haven't got five days, you can use scuff pads. Uh, you might have seen these. People talk about scotch pads or scotching it up. You see the pro guys doing it, they use a big pad and they just roof and a bonnet or a boot lid or whatever and they just tear the paint down. Three coarsenesses, if you like, there's the red super coarse, that's really for taking paint off when you're first going to paint. Um, the green is medium and the grey is very fine. Now normally, I spoke to Mackie about this, he said you would use the grey, the fine pad on this just to take the surface off, but this is tough paint and tough paint, it does it say what it says on the tin, it's super tough and this won't touch it. It, it kind of does, but it certainly doesn't take enough off for what we need. We need to make a nice key for the new paint to stick. So I'm going to go one up on the green, but gently, and I'm just going to rub it over dry that way. That way, if I have to retouch anything, because I've had to do that, both the side panels in the end and the mud guard, I had to just recoat them completely and went through in so many places, I thought just recoat them over. Now that means that there won't be a full five days between them being painted now and then being over for the artwork to come in. So I haven't got that, that normal time span for it to dry out. So tomorrow, when they're dry off camera, I will just scuff them over with a dry pad and that will just replace the key that's there. Also, it gave me an opportunity to flat down all the imperfections and get them really nice. There's a much better finish now. Show you that at the end. But for now, I'm just gonna use one of these and do the tank with this, which means I won't be so likely to go through on the corners because I can see what I'm doing. You can see your progress. When you're using a dry scuff pad, just gently, you don't need to lean on it because you'll just put tracks in it, it's very scratchy. Come in close, man. You got a shiny bit there? Now this front bit, can you see that bit there? Mm -hmm. Just with one of these, literally just, and I'm literally, the weight of my hand on that, just going round and round, just gently in a nice circular, small circular motion, so you're not putting long lines in it, just for, However long that is, 20 seconds, there we are. Look at that, right through it. It's taken the surface off, keyed it up, and that's all we need to do for painting. So I'm gonna do the whole tank with this, and when I've done it with the, gray, the, the green, which is slightly coarse, I'm then gonna go over it with the gray and smooth out a little bit of it to get the perfect finish for painting. Let's carry on.
Okay, now I'm tack ragging this because it seems that when I first painted it, I missed just a little section at the front, just the fact that it was hanging that way up. It was downmost, so I didn't spray upwards, just missed that. And in one tiny section, I've gone through. So I'm gonna quickly recoat this like all the other plastics. That means that then all the plastics have been recoated and I can rescuff them up dry tomorrow and it'll still be fine. But the tank came out really well. So just a quick recoat of this. I can call it done. So as you can see, I've had in the end to repaint all of the plastics. The steel on the tank is absolutely fine. That's scotched up just beautifully and that's perfect, ready to paint. No flaws, no blemishes, one little tiny run or little tiny, I can't remember what it was, it was just a little bubble of air or something, but that's flattened out perfectly. Everything else is perfect, that's fine. But the others, there are just too many corners and bumps and little contours like this. And in rubbing down the imperfections, because obviously as I painted it the first time, there were little imperfections and ripples in it and a couple of little fish eyes. In rubbing those out, you just go through it. You've got to go through it a tiny little bit. The blue shows through, that's it. So I put another coat of paint on the side panels and the front of my guard. Not a thick coat, only on one single thin coat. And on this one, which is still wet, I just put a thin coat on that as well. So the whole tail unit has been perfectly scotched up, just like that. There were just two places on this side, went through one corner and a corner at the front. And on the left hand cheek, where I made a perfect rub down of it, I just saw a tiny shadow of that yellow primer underneath. So I'd just gone too thin on that base coat. So the whole thing, just repaint again. The plastics always react differently to steel. That's just how it is. But they'll take 24 hours to dry right out. And then I will scotch pad those bone dry so they'll still be okay to paint at the weekend. And there we are, that's that done. Uh, came in at half nine, it was free. What is that, five hours, Ben? Five Ten hours. Minutes, was it? Five yeah. hours in the garage just to do that. This is a long old project. Sorry it wasn't the most interesting and riveting of videos, but obviously I hope you can learn something. The scotch pads, give them a try. Go and get some. Next time you're doing some paint work, do it yourself, and you'll learn a little bit about it. Perfect it with your own practice, and you can make amazing paint jobs. Many of the comments have been, how can you make a rattle can paint job look professional? Just use professional spray gun type preparation for the rattle cans because all the rattle can is is a system of delivery as simple as that that is rattle can paint that is rattle can paint no difference whatsoever it's because what's underneath it is absolutely perfect 99 percent of any paint job is what's underneath the, the layer over the top just puts a color on it simple as that but here we are you already know that anything else Ben? that's it thank you that's it take it easy thanks for watching ride safe see you next time <laughs>